I think you've touched on this quite a bit already, but let's focus in a little bit more on the income and expenses because especially for purely investment properties, the value is based on you know that income minus expenses, the net operating income. Um, so we've talked a little bit about you know mm-hmm. having high quality tenants, um, but what other systems or processes have you developed to really make sure that NOI is as high as it can be? Well, a good example for that is I have a 14-unit apartment building that we own in downtown St. Paul, and one of the things that we did is we, we the roof needed to be replaced. It was leaking and it just was old and everything. So instead of just getting the cheapest roof that you could possibly get, we got a little bit higher quality one that had a much better R value for insulation. So um, that ended up shopping $500 a month off of our uh, heating bill for the building. Another thing that we did is we implemented a rubs system, ratio utility billing system. So effectively what that is, is there's certain shared utilities in the building that you can't um, segregate and we build those back to the tenants. So for the year that we implemented it, we didn't do any sort of rent increase, but we just shifted some of the utility burdens to them. Um, That's one way to do it. But again, it comes down to a lot of efficiency. So another thing that we did is we replaced all the light fixtures in the building and got LED light fixtures. And the company that we actually bought it from financed it to us over a three-year period so that the savings that we got on our electricity bill were about the same as the payment for the replacement of all the light fixtures. And so it was kind of net neutral for three years. And then once that payment fell off, then we're saving $300 a month in electricity. So I'd say all in all, we were able to shave probably $36,000 in expenses off of the building just through um, the the rubs, the electricity, and the um, the roof and the insulation. So, hmm. well, That's really interesting, uh, making sure that your building is efficient mm-hmm. so that you're not paying more than you need to in utilities, yeah. and then um, where appropriate, allowing the tenants to pay for what they use. Mm-hmm. I mean, asking tenants to pay for utilities is always a little bit tricky because they don't want to. So I could have potentially raised the rent $50 or displaced those utilities onto them. But um, my thought was they'll have a different approach with their usage if they're paying for it. Um, For example, one time we walked into a a tenant's unit for a maintenance request and they had their, uh, this was in the summer, they had their thermostat set to 62 with all the windows open. And, and because they were not paying for the, the heating or the cooling. So um, people waste things when they're not paying for it. Yeah. If you go to a wedding and it's open bar, you'll see half uh, half empty drinks everywhere. Uh, mm-hmm. Whereas if somebody's paying $9 for it, chances are they're going to drink the whole thing. So Yeah, that makes sense. Want to hear more on this topic? Click the link below for the full episode of Maximizing Your Property Value.